Next up, we have the forecasting period issues. So we have to decide the forecast years of our DCF valuations. So far, we have used a five-year forecast in our three statement models. And that is the most common forecast years, usually in the financial industry. Of course, some people, you know, in, in some occasions, you need three-year forecast. In some occasions, you do 10-year forecast. But anyways, we did a five-year forecast. Uh, but the key question here is, how does it impact our DCF valuations? When we're doing a 10-year DCF, so when we are projecting explicit cash flow for 10 years and then assuming terminal value from year 11, or when we're doing a five-year explicit cash flow projection and then assuming a terminal value from year 6, which method, A or B, which method would result in longer, uh, in greater valuations, greater results? Uh, answers first, the longer the forecasting period is, the higher the valuation would become. And, you know, how do we decide it then? How do we decide? In most cases, a five-year DCF is most common. However, if you think that the five-year forecast does not reflect the company performance properly, for example, if you're doing a DCF for Tesla, probably you're, you're not only curious of five years later, but probably you're much more curious on the results that you know, Tesla performs 10 years later. So in those cases, a 10-year DCF is also ex can be accepted, despite the fact that it results in longer, in, in, a, in, a, in higher uh, valuations. A and we'll, you know, we'll see that just in a moment. Uh, there are rare cases where we do a 20-year DCF or a 30-year DCF, a DCF very, uh, for a long time period. Usually those DCFs are used when the, the future cash flow is pretty much decided. So for example, if you're doing a DCF for a electric plant, Usually, when an electric plant is built, they, they go into a contract with the electric company to sell the electricity at a given price, at a given quantity, for maybe 20 or 30 years. So the contract is there, so the future cash flow is pretty much decided and very easy to forecast. So in, in those rare cases where free cash flow is predetermined and very easy to calculate, a DCF longer than 20 or 30 years can be accepted. But when we're you know, doing stocks, you know, in, in most cases, it would be five years or you know, 10 years at the longest. Uh, and generally, as told before, DCF forecasting period is based on the maturity level of the business. So, for example, let's say that a company, we have projected that that company will, you know, grow 20% for the next five years. It's growing in 2020, 20%. And then, all of a sudden, we're assigning a terminal growth rate of 1% from year six. Think, just look at how you know, unnatural this gross trajectory seems, right? Gross rate of 20% and all of a sudden 1%. That's very unnatural. So in these cases, with higher gross rates, a 10-year DCF allows you to smoothen the gross rates uh, decline. And now it's going 20%. And then, you know, it, it, it sort of slow, uh, slows down. And now it's growing like at 10%. And then finally, it reaches its terminal growth rate. You can do it like a uh, st stairway, or you can just you know make make a linear trajectory and make it reach one percent, uh, you know gradually. But anyways, this seems much more natural. So that is why 
companies with you know higher growth rates and usually companies with higher growth rates are companies in very early stages so maybe startups or companies that has just been listed those kind of companies a higher longer year dcf can be accepted um, but in most cases five-year dcf uh, you know it's now growing let's say a company is growing at five percent even if the terminal growth rate drops down to 1%, it seems very natural. So in those cases, you have to use five-year DCF. Before uh, finishing our session on the forecasting period, um, what I want you guys to do is just take a look at our fill and talks case study and see what year DCF we must apply for our fill and talks company. Should we use a 5-year DCF or should we use a 10-year DCF? I'm going to leave the answers to you and come back to it in our Excel practice session.